Praise the Lord and good morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Gospel Light Daily Broadcast. My name is Isaiah Oyugi and it's always a privilege to bring the Word of God to you. In today's broadcast, we continue with um, our learning on the series we have been running this week on growing intimacy with the Lord, getting to know God closer, uh, becoming a friend of God, building a closer walk with the Lord. Since Monday, we have established a few things. Now, we have established that um, the main reason why God called his disciples, or Jesus called his disciples, was to be with them, to build an intimate, close relationship with them, and then to send them out to go and preach. He called them to be with them, and then to send them out to go and preach. So we have established that God has called us into a relationship, and then later on, he has given us a responsibility. And the most important of these two is actually the relationship that we have with the Lord. It's more important that we are with him than that we go for him. And uh, so on Monday, we talked about that. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, we talked about some of the benefits of uh, uh, growing close to God. We talked about uh, how growing close to God will release his favor in your life will strengthen you with the energy that you need to uh, go through life, how that will give you his peace and uh, refine your character and help you to clarify the mission of God for your life. And finally, we said yesterday that uh, intimacy with God will also sharpen your skills. It will make you excellent. It will deliver excellence to you. This morning, uh, I want to proceed there uh, and I want to mention a few other rewards for being close to God, a few other benefits or a few other rewards for building intimacy with the Lord. And like I said from Monday, you can find all that material in my book, uh, Intimacy with, I mean, in, in, in Constant Touch with God. And you can get this material from our stores. You just call our numbers or write us an email uh, and we shall be able to uh, deliver this to you from wherever you are across the world. Great. So let's delve into today's um, uh, teaching, other rewards for a growing intimacy with God. And I want us to start by reading Psalms 91 and from verse number 1 to 6. Psalms 91 from verse number 1 to verse number 6. A powerful psalm. I love it. I, I love this psalm. Let's read it together. Psalms 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the faller and from the noisome pestilence. Mm -hmm. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by the day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. He says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes will thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high thy habitation. He says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. We can go on and on and on and on reading this uh, scripture. But the point here is simple, that when you draw close to God and you have intimacy with Him, you will have divine protection and preservation. God protects those who are intimate with Him. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Lord, He says they shall abide under His divine protection and covering. And He promises that there will be no harm that will befall them under the protective canopy, canopy of His divine presence. This is what God did for the Israelites, for Moses and the Israelites, as they journeyed from Egypt to the land God swore to them. He protected them. He preserved them. 
He promised Joshua that no man would be able to stand up against him all the days of his life. And David, throughout the Psalms, you can see how he rejoiced in the divine protection from all the wicked plans that uh, enemies had over him. Why? Because God protected them. Any man and any woman who makes God his dwelling place, who is committed to a relationship with the Father, who is intimate with God, will have his protection. And the scriptures are full and full of men and women like this that were preserved by God. Two come into my mind. One of them is Job. You know about Job? The devil couldn't attack Job. The Bible says God testified that Job was a man who was God-fearing, who was righteous, who eschewed evil. And he always sacrificed to God and prayed. If you read Job chapter number 1 from verse number 1 to verse number 5. This communion was the secret of God's protective hedge over his family, over him, his family, and everything that he had. In Job chapter number uh, 1 and verse number 9, the Bible says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, That Job fear God for nothing? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance has increased in the land. Even the enemy could not, uh, you know, ignore the fact that God had protected Job. But Job's life is shown how he intimate he was with God, how he feared God, how he hated evil, how he gave sacrifices on behalf of his sons to sanctify them, how he prioritized God in his life and in his family and in his relationships. And you cannot do this and God did not protect you. If you're feeling naked, like everything, you know, the devil is throwing, is getting at you, you need to check if the protective covering is there. And how do you check that? By just being with the Lord and building an intimate relationship with God every single day of your life. David said in Psalms 23 and verse 4, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. As long as God is with me, I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to fear. He says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but he shall not come near thee. Only with your eyes will you see and behold uh, the enemy's uh, plans. But nothing of it shall touch you. Another good psalm is Psalms 118. Let me read this one for you. Psalms 118 and verse number 7. Psalms 118 and verse number 7. The Bible says, um, The Lord taketh part, my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see the desire, my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princesses. All the nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compassed me about, yeah, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy all of them. There is nothing that can get to you when you are under the protective canopy of the presence of God. So build an intimate relationship with the Lord. It will protect you. Another benefit or another reward for, the, you know, for building intimacy with God is that those that build intimacy with the Lord, those that are God's intimates, they enjoy divine supply and provision. God provides for those who look to Him as their only source of help. He does not forsake His own. Neither does He allow their, their children to beg for bread, as David observed. David said in the scriptures, he says, I've been young, Psalms 37 and verse 25. I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God protects his children, but he also divinely provides and supplies their needs. In Psalms 84 and verse number 11, the Bible says he gives good things to those who ask him and he holds nothing good from those who walk uprightly. Those that are intimate to him, that walk uprightly with him, there is nothing that we withhold from them that is good. He has blessed us, the Bible says, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And his divine power has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. If you read Ephesians 1 verse 3 and 2 Peter chapter number 1 verse number 4, you find those scriptures. And he daily loads us with the benefits that accompany salvation. So as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the Bible says that all these other things that people are looking for shall be added unto us. We need to prioritize being with the Lord. People chase after so many things 
and they're still lacking and they're still in need. All your needs, spiritual, emotional, material, all of them are made inside Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Him we move, we live, we have our full being inside of Jesus Christ. It is important that we don't get worried and bogged down over things and around us, but that we actually give our lives to walking with the Lord because then we have our supply there. The Bible says in Matthew number 7 and verse number 11, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? There is nothing that God will withhold from them that seek him, from them that ask of him. And if we are going to build our relationship with the Lord, then we have the courage to ask him anything and we know that he will do it for us. Let me show you a scripture in Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 32. Beautiful scripture here that I want you to see. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 32. Now the Bible says this. Uh, let's read it from verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his son, own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God is willing to give everything to us, including meeting our daily needs. And Jesus taught us how to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. He was teaching us how to be intimate with God. And in our intimacy, in terms of talking and, and, and supplication and prayer, he says to us to ask for our needs. Why? Because God is committed to supply the needs of those that look up to him. Blessed is the man whose helper is the God of Jacob. He says there in Psalms uh, uh, 146 and verse number 5. Blessed is the man whose helper is the God of Jacob. I want God to be my helper. I don't want to be uh, lacking in anything. I will lack nothing good if I am committed to building my relationship with the Father. Lastly for today, getting close to God or intimacy with God also gives you access into divine secrets and wisdom and revelation. The secrets of the Lord are with those that fear Him. Such are those who walk uprightly before him. They are the ones who qualify to ascend in the Lord's holy presence where God's spirit reveals mysteries, deep insights and revelations to them. God reveals his secrets, his mysteries to those that prioritize intimacy with him. He says, call unto me and I will show you great things that no, the world does not know. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. Call unto me. You separate yourself. You go into your closet and you call unto God. If you're busy building intimacy with the Lord, God will reveal himself to you in amazing ways. His spirit reveals deep things to those that are determined to look for him. Daniel determined not to defile himself with the king's delicacies. He chose the path of purity and God will reveal every secret to him whenever he called on God. If you're committed to the Lord and building a relationship, God will show himself strong in your life. In John chapter number 15 and verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And therefore, henceforth I call you not my servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have had of my Father, I have made known unto you. So God makes known unto his friends, those that are intimate with him, his divine secrets and his divine revelations. Secrets into building uh, world-class businesses, world-class families, world-class organizations, world-class ministries. You want to succeed in any sphere of life, become the best in the arts, become the best in education, become the best in business, become the best in uh, politics and governance. Whatever area of interest you have in technology and other areas that you have, media, God is able to bring you to the top by revealing secrets to you if you are committed to staying with Him. There is nothing God will withhold from those that love him. Genesis chapter number 18 verse 17 says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I am about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, 
He will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the ways of the Lord. He is committed to my ways. He is committed to being intimate with me. I know his heart. Therefore, I don't have anything I will hide from him. The Lord is committed to reveal himself to those that honor him, those that love him, those that pursue him. He says in 1 Corinthians, as it is written, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 9, 10, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ears had, neither has entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. These deep things of God, God reveals to those that prioritize coming close to him. Just as it is in natural life, you reveal your best to your friends, and your secrets to your friends, so does God. If you want God to show you great things, and to reveal the great meanings of life, you need to prioritize being with Him. But you can't do this if you've never started a journey with the Lord. And so this morning, I want to ask you, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, to consider accepting Jesus in your heart. Say this prayer after me uh, to appropriate this. One, say this prayer to me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died on the cross and God raised you from the dead for my salvation. And with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and make your dwelling place there in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you've made that prayer, find a Bible-believing church near where you stay. Get plugged in. God will do amazing things with you in your generation. And I pray in the name of Jesus for every of my hearers that God will bring you close to him. And as you come close to him, that you'll have his divine hedge of protection, his divine provision, and his divine insights into the beauty of life for his glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. And until the next episode, may the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shine in your heart. Amen, amen.